Live from Washington, D.C. and Brand USA, this is Inside Go USA TV and OTT. Did that sound official enough? <laughs> I think you got it. You want to introduce us? <laughs> You've got on the line here myself, Giselle Makatiag, the Director of Emerging Platforms and Audience Development, and I have here next to me Mr. Mark Lapidus, our Senior Director of Digital Development. I'm glad you didn't make me say your last name because I would have messed it up as I always do. I've gotten a lot of versions. I've gotten Macintosh, um, which is weird. There's a lot of letters in that that doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, before we get into the webinar, Giselle, you know, you threw down the gauntlet and said I had to tell some dad jokes. So 10 seconds of dad jokes, okay? You ready? Go for it. These are all digital dad jokes right nonetheless. <laughs> Where's the safest place to hide anything you don't want people to see? Yeah. The second page of Google. But um bum 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 <laughs> What do religion and paid search advertisers have in common? Oh. They really want people to convert. <laughs> and finally, my favorite one. What's a pirate's favorite content format? Tell me. A webinar that's B to C. Uh. Ah. Okay. <laughs> now let's get into the webinar. You going to want to start with a big picture? Oh, you want yeah. me to start with the yeah. picture? Okay, I will. So I'll start this one by asking a question. Um, have you ever gone surf fishing? I haven't. Okay, so surf fishing requires one to stand in the surf. You're actually um, kind of right where the water hits the sand, and you're throwing your line way out into the water. So wait, is this you? That's me, actually. Okay. I'm the guy in the green shirt, and there's a, uh, one of my kid's friends is, like, watching me to see whether or not I'm going to catch anything. Um, so... What's happened here is I was standing on the right where you're supposed to stand when you surf fish, you're in the sand, and you're throwing the line out into the water, and I'd been out there for like two hours drinking beer, and while I was feeling pretty good from drinking the beer and the sun, I wasn't catching any fish. When off in the distance, if you take a very close look at this picture on the left there, you'll see that there looks like there's something. Mm -hmm. It's actually a school of bluefish. But it was too far for me to reach. So what did I do? I had a bathing suit on, of course, so I waded out into the water, and I went fishing because in order to go fishing, you've got to go fish where the fish are. And so this gets down to really one of the myths that we talk about uh, when it comes to content and distribution. For years, people have been talking about how content is king. And um, I was listening to this guy. Uh, some of you may be familiar with him. His name is Bob Lefsetz. And if you don't subscribe to his podcast or read his newsletters, I really highly recommend him. He's, he's, a, he's an original thinker, and while I don't think this idea is completely his, I don't think it's totally original, he's the one that really has kind of been proselytizing this around uh, the country, which is you can make the best content in the world. Uh, and a great example of this is if we spent $50 million in a movie, but we couldn't find a place to show it or a television network to distribute it, then we've made a fantastic movie and no one's gonna see it. And so his thesis is that distribution actually is the real king, it isn't content. And um, I really think he has a strong point. And that's one of the things that has led us into our strategy. Yeah, and, and what really is telling you about our, our strategy really is the fact that today video content is everywhere. Um, it is still really important to have content that is you know, really great, compelling, resonates with your target audience. But at the end of the day, the environment that we're in, um, the landscape that exists is as messy as the chart that you see here. There are a ton of different players. There are multiple ways that consumers are accessing video content. Um, it's super diversified. And um, as brands, as advertisers, we need to think through that space as well. There's a lot of confusion actually about um, what OTT is, and I'd like to quickly run through some abbreviations. It, it's funny, I've only worked in travel, I guess, with Cohen on pretty close to five years this, um, this summer, but um, one of the things that hit me when I first started working in this vertical is that there are a million acronyms. I literally had to make two pages of, of notebook yeah, you know, entries to just understand what was happening in the travel industry. Um, and and the, broad, the broadcast industry, is, which is really where I came from, also has its own abbreviations for things. And mm -hmm. I, I don't think I have to explain broadcasting. Everybody gets that. But the next one is actually pretty interesting, and it's been happening for a couple of years now. It is, it's multi-channel video programming. And really what that is is, is actually a provider like uh, Comcast or Verizon, Vios, 
that's providing a cable signal, and they're also giving you other avenues of programming uh, that are actually coming over the internet, although you may not realize it. Uh, an example of this might be them adding Hulu to the package, right? You're actually getting that off an internet feed, but it's integrated into the cable system. VOD, uh, I think, is really where that started first. Yeah, um, video on demand. So a lot of these MVPD providers, Comcast, Xfinity, um, um, Verizon, have their own VOD channels within their package. Um, and I think that's where it started. So the, the early version was often called IPTV, Internet Protocol yeah. Television, right? That's, yeah. that's because it was coming over the Internet and you know, it uses a protocol to deliver the data, so a really geeky abbreviation. Uh, the two that we're actually going to focus on today, and there's, there's a very subtle difference between them, um, and it's really not all that important, but we feel like you should know what they are in case somebody asks you and you're trying to explain it. Connected television actually is a, is a smart TV where everything is built into the actual TV. I bought one of these, I don't know, maybe three years ago, three or four years ago when I finally cut the cable. And um, it came with um, channels that were already on it, internet channels. Mine actually still looks at the Yahoo store. Believe it really? or not, yeah, Yahoo actually has an app store. And so in that Yahoo store, you can download YouTube, you get you know, yeah. um, uh, Netflix, yeah. you get, you get what, pretty much whatever you want. Um, but that's actually what connected television is. It's, it's a TV that's connected to the Internet. So what's the difference between OTT, which stands for over-the-top television and CTV? OTT really is um, the use of peripheral devices that you're plugging in somehow. Uh, that might be, um, uh, what's the game? Uh, a console? Yeah, any kind of game yeah. console, right? Like uh, Roku might be the game console or it might be Xbox. Xbox. I actually, I was on vacation recently and used I, at the Airbnb I was staying at, they actually had an Xbox. It took me a little while to figure it out. Yeah, but I used the Xbox to actually watch Netflix. We were in the middle of the series and I couldn't miss one night. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, what series was that? Uh, Peaky Blinders. Don't don't judge me. Don't, I haven't. Don't yeah, I don't watch me. a lot of TV. So well, it's, yeah. it's really to warn people. It's, yeah. it's violent and too violent for me actually, but the plot is pretty interesting. Anyway, so um, you might al also get OTT on a a little like plug-in device. A stick. A stick. Thank you very yeah. much. I was I was motioning to yeah. her. She saw me. <laughs> sometimes. So I'm usually you see work. this as a Roku stick yeah. or an Amazon Fire stick. Right. Um, or. It might be Apple TV mm -hmm. that, that actually comes sometimes. They're, they're really different looking depending on Just which version square. you have. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it's square, sometimes it's round, sometimes it's, they're making them all kinds of different ways. And by the way, if you're hearing construction noises, that isn't Giselle's song. It's <laughs> something happening upstairs. So here's our screen strategy. You want to explain this one? Yeah. So um, our uh, screen strategy and storytelling platforms is really about utilizing all of these different platforms to tell the same story, but that story fit to that screen. Um, we have mobile, really about them stopping snackable content. Um, we see that on our different social handles, whether it's Instagram or Facebook, um, laptop is, and desktop, that's really what we really see is our, our website, uh, a portal for self-directed discovery of, of destinations and itinerary building. Um, what we're really diving into today is streaming TV, our, our connected TV channel, GoSA TV, and what this does is caters to that lean back and watch behavior, that opportunity to t tell a longer form story and a deeper story. Um, digital out of home is still something that we use if, um, to connect, it's connected TV delivers engaging experience content within a specified location. Um, and then Giant Screen, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with our Giant Screen films in partnership with the McGilvery um, Freeman Films. So as the next slide says, we do live in this multi-screen, multi-platform world, and there are so many consumers that are hopping on this bandwagon. Uh, one in three say that they're, they've never had cable or will no longer do so. And as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, uh, I never thought I would do it. And three years ago, I cut the cable. Um, and plugged an antenna in for the first time in God knows how many years just so I could get over the year HDTV. Mm -hmm. And much to my shock, I got like 30 HDD channels here in Washington. Yeah, more yeah. than I ever thought I would get. Wow. You know, so if I still want to watch Saturday Night Live, I can watch it, which you is kind of cool. You can still watch that on your smart TV. Yeah, yeah. which yeah. is really very cool. But, you know, for the most part, again, I'm just watching movies. So um, looking ahead into the future by 2025, Half of the viewers under 32 will not subscribe to a pay TV service. 
which I guess is bad news for the cable providers, but on the other hand, they're going to make it up in their internet subscribers, so maybe and it all you, comes out you, in the wash. And you also see these providers starting their own streaming channels that are subscription-based as well. There's DirecTV Now, um, so they're also making the moves to enter this space um, as they see people cutting the cord. I, I keep getting these ads from Best Buy for cheap TVs, and it blows my mind. <laughs> and it makes me a little mad because I bought mine three years ago. You know, you can buy these gigantic smart TVs yeah. now for like less than three hundred dollars. I mean, it's really a mind blower that the phone in your pocket costs more money than a giant screen TV for your living room. Yeah. So that's why we're in the connected TV business, and we would like to introduce you to Go USA TV. The tagline for GoSA TV really is because every place is, has a story. Um, and what that really speaks to is the fact whether we're, you're from an international standpoint, one of these gateways that people know already, or a smaller town or neighborhood, there is a story to tell. There is exciting stuff, and we want to be able to show that on GoUSA TV and, and, and encourage users to download, escape, explore, and watch. So one of the cool things about GoUSA TV is it allows us to get into uh, deeper storytelling um, because now we're in this environment where people are watching for longer periods of time. In fact, uh, while we're not ready to really kind of dump out the full statistics about the television network, which what is really interesting to us is the time spent watching um, is, is so long. It's What was the last one you saw for an average? 17 to it's unbelievable, 17 to 20 minutes for one piece of content. And truthfully, I haven't seen numbers like that since 1995, 96, when the Internet, when I started building websites. And, you know, you get that kind of um, uh, time on, on site in those days with, you know, like 15, 16 page views, but it was because there weren't that many websites yet. Yeah. You know, so the astounding part to me about this is that there are so many choices, and yet when someone chooses – to watch your content, they're watching it a lot longer, mm -hmm. which is really, really cool. So um, we, we've decided to expand uh, Go USA TV beyond actually OTT, um, and we're currently on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. What kind of led us down this path is we also wanted to be on Google Chromecast, and uh, we learned very quickly that Chromecast actually works off of a smartphone. So <laughs> in order to actually use Chromecast, um, you, you actually have to have the product on a smartphone. We were eventually going to do that anyway. This just kicked up the time schedule a little bit faster, right? So, mm -hmm. so we have now um, made the commitment to bring uh, Go USA TV to your smartphone. And um, the official launch is when, Giselle? November? It's this Monday, November 5th. November 5th, right. Yeah. So it's global. We do have something. Uh, I don't know. I may get in trouble for telling people, but I'll, I'll, take, I'll go out on a limb anyway. So um, we're not really making this public yet, although if you search, you'd find it anyway. Um, and we are looking for early testers. So if you feel like downloading this app, you could download it today because it actually is live in the, um, in the Apple Store, in the, Google, in the, um, the Apple Store. And also, um, it went live uh, today in the Google Play Store. The, the Android version, we're still really working on. It's, it's, it's turned out to be quite buggy. It still has some issues. Uh, the iPhone one is, is pretty cool. I mean, I haven't really noticed a lot of issues with that. But we're happy to hear from people as you look at it. You can be our testers in the industry, and they can write to what address? GoUSATV at thebrandusa.com. And that email address is also in the deck, so we'll definitely have that up for everyone. And so as we build out this uh, this channel and, and the content around it, we've built a platform strategy to really harness kind of fine-tune exactly what our objectives and our strategy around the channel. Um, our three main objectives really first and foremost is to inspire travel to the United States through entertainment. And, and with that, we want to draw people into the channel with emotional narratives and specifically with a sense of place. Um, you see this in your day-to-day -day lives when you um, you watched um, Wild and now you want to go on that hiking trail. You saw um, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, and you want to go. I never saw that. Oh, you, it's so great! Yeah, you should. I went and I studied abroad in Greece because of that movie. Um, Eat, Pray, Love is another example yeah. of really great um, narrative, emotional narratives that have a, a sense of place. 
Um, secondly, um, champion a diverse set of content creators. Really, this is about sourcing a diverse range of premium content um, at an affordable price because you know, we, we are a DMO, um, we are not Netflix, but at the same time we really want to tell diverse stories, whether it is um, a small town in um, the Midwest or a, a big city adventure, and whether it's a local perspective or an international visitor's perspective, we want to tell all those stories to have that diversity. And then lastly, to be the go-to chan channel can, um, for content featuring U.S. destinations. We want to be the go-to place to share pieces of American culture that otherwise wouldn't be discovered. Um, it's really about um, being a consistent place for quality content. You know, we've already been asked whether or not by certain DMOs whether or not it makes sense for them to have their own connected TV channel. It's a very difficult question to answer because yeah. we honestly don't know what the success is going to be because we're all so new to this. Um, our thinking, though, is that even if you're going to launch your own connected TV channel, that you would still hopefully be part of ours as well because, of course, what we're trying to do is attract international travelers to the United States, so that's how we focus our content. Um, and additionally, we feel as if we offer the broad variety of what the United States has to offer, that it's a lot more likely we're going to get people to watch the channel on a more regular basis. I love this next slide. Did you make this one or did Tracy Lanza make this? It was a team effort was it? With, with our strategy. Good job. I love it. Yeah. Why don't you explain it? It's just, so it's beautiful. Just, I mean, all the stories that we, we in our own lives, um, connect to uh, basically sit in any of these five themes, friendship, self-discovery, falling in love, adventure, achievement. These are personal journeys that happen um, and, and that anchor um, a narrative. You know, I was just thinking story. that the opposite of these could also build, you know, like uh, enemies and uh, it being introverted, so maybe, like, falling out know, of love, divorce. Right. Yeah, so the, the negative side is, yes, <laughs> if you're into that kind of content. I, I like to focus Go USA TV more on the positive end of that spectrum. Um, but the important part about this, um, again, is, is that sense of place, is that these journeys didn't happen if it had not happened in a location in the United States. So um, one of the things we're doing, of course, right now is we're starting to actually look at, at ways to get content. Um, we're certainly going to produce uh, some content here, but as everyone knows, our funds are not unlimited, and so we're going to have to make some tough production choices. Another avenue is we're going to be licensing content from a variety of providers. And then the third is uh, we will be accepting content that people would like to offer okay, to us, yeah. right? Uh, unfortunately, we can't accept all of it. We do have this little committee going here that's going to look at everything that comes in mm -hmm. to make sure that it meets the brand standards that we have and is yeah. appropriate for the channel. But maybe you could run through some of these content yeah, selection the, guidelines. The, the main role of the platform itself within our ecosystem here at, um, at Brand USA is, is really to curate entertainment-led storytelling with a distinct sense of place. The key in this is entertainment rather than destination information. And so when we're looking at content that we're considering to either license or, or produce, we're really focusing on the fact that first and foremost, it prioritizing that prioritizes that storytelling over destination in information. Really a, a plot that runs through either each episode and a whole series or that entire documentary or feature film. Um, it also highlights a unique um, uh, a uniqueness about a place, um, whether it's through cultural elements, food, music, identities, traditions. Um, it, should, it should be unique. Um, it shares something new about a well-known destination. What do you not know about um, Brooklyn? What do you not know about Los Angeles? Um, um, it follows a single ca character or a set of characters throughout the series, um, and then otherwise set in an unknown, de unknown destination. Um, there is a great opportunity on this channel to tell the stories of locations all across um, all 50 states, five territories in the District of Columbia that no one knows, that tiny town in Oklahoma or that right. you know right. neighborhood in, in New Mexico. You know, at the risk of alienating uh, somebody that I'm going to leave out here, I, I would like to uh, have a shout out to our friends at Visit Seattle who actually check the boxes, uh, every single one of these yeah. boxes with a few series that they have given to us to run on Go USA TV. And if, if you haven't downloaded our network yet, either on OTT or the app, you could actually watch that couple of their series um, on the web. Um, crowdsource. Uh, crowdsource is really good, and, and turning, turning tables are the two that we've actually got on the channel. And as you watch them, you'll see that each of them actually checks the box um, for each for for this entire slide.
So, of course, one of the things we start talking about as soon as we build a channel is um, how to measure success. And what we're really at in technically year zero so far of uh, <laughs> GoUSA TV is really about gaining insights for growth. And, and um, as we continue to collect the, the data of who's watching, what they're watching, we want to try and slice this up by, by country, um, uh, their content preferences, um, the performance of that content, and, and how long they're spending with that type of content. We also want to make sure that we're watching as we launch the app the differences between over the top versus the app type of behaviors. Um, and then eventually start to create content that supports our mission based on the content that we're, based on the data that we're, we're getting from both the OTT channel and the, the app. At the end of the day, we're hoping that the audience will actually drive the content that we yeah. make because we will actually have enough data. Of course, it's going to take us a year or two or maybe even three. We don't know yet uh, until we have enough data to really start making those yeah. kind of decisions. But we hope that the program will actually be informed by the audience rather than us just guessing at it. Um, so we have talked a little bit about uh, the programming. And you know, one of the questions, obviously, we get is how people will submit. You can submit ideas or uh, pieces of content that you would like us to take a look at for consideration on the channel to GoUSA TV at thebrandusa.com. There is additional information on our um, Brand USA site. The link is here for you um, on the deck. Um, we just ask that you refer back to the content selection guidelines to make sure that all of those boxes are checked on your pieces of content or the idea that you're setting forth. So we're going to give you a couple of examples of things that fit into these different buckets. The first one we're going to show you is a Go USA original. You want to explain the background on this one a little? Spirit Song follows um, uh, Gareth Lafley, who is an amazing flautist, flutist. Um, never I know how to say, say it wrong. I, I say know. it wrong every time. Um, and uh, and producer Lance Bendixson as they uh, record uh, their album Voices of the Guardians. So. So this is one that we funded and made ourselves with uh, help from our friends at Citizen. Our religion is the traditions of our ancestors and is written in the hearts of our people. Music is something that has this presence that nothing else really has in the world. Music is magic. There's no boundaries. You know, it carries the importance of culture and history but there's no borders, it transcends everything, and you just feel it. It goes right into your heart. Music is, it's a language of its own, and you don't have to speak the words, but that music can tell you a story. We all have something to share, young or old, we're all teachers. Now it's my turn to pass it on, and that's exactly what I have done. Art isn't something that was ever intended to stay the same. It's meant to be more like a river that's moving forward. When we come together to sing and dance, it really fills our soul. It's who we are. It's, it grabs you. It grabs your heart and soul. It's so universal It just every culture, every, it, it, you can't go anywhere in the world where there isn't music. There's a different sound that you can find in all of these different places because there's a heartbeat that exists in the earth. two key components that we'd like to point out here um, that are important to that video and others that you'll see on our OTT channel and in the app are entertainment and information. You know, so those are the two things that we hope will actually bring the emotion to the story rather than, I mean, we also have videos that you're going to see in there that are just the typical pretty tourist videos, 
where you're seeing gorgeous beaches and fantastic mountains and certainly there is space for that there's there is room and there are certainly there's an audience for it but we feel also that we have to enter the world of storytelling in order to truly engage the audience so uh, the next video that you're going to see is one that was uh, donated to us from our friends in nashville Town has this energy. You never know who you're going to bump into. We moved to Nashville and I started singing in clubs five nights a week. On any given night, you can go to the end and watch a show. You go to Tootsie's and watch a show. You go to Exit End. You go to the Ryman. They're sick musicians and sick singers. It doesn't surprise me. It's Music City. about that is that you know upon first look you think it's just all about music and um, unsaid really is is how this location that sense of place Nashville gives to these artists to make them as successful and as as creative as they are it, it, it's so well done if you have not seen this movie I highly recommend it either watch it online or watch it on our TV network and it, it really speaks to the core of what it is we're yeah. trying to do um, they, they just did a fantastic job, on, and it's a full-length movie. It's uh, 46 minutes. 40 Long. Um, our next example here is uh, from our friends at Seattle. It's called Crowdsource, and it's a little bit more, um, it's, it's quirky and fun, and um, let's just, let's play it. So here it's a great example of, yes, sense of place, but it also follows um, a set of four characters. There is a, a narrative, a challenge, as, um, as you can see, that follows them through each episode that helps uh, viewers discover something new about that destination. And the last one we're going to show you here comes from a group of influencers that we've done a number of project with, projects with. And they had actually already done this series um, two years ago, and um, they had also been involved with the Today Show and NBC at one point. Um, this was already housed on YouTube, and we felt like it deserved uh, also a television audience, and they agreed to license this to us, because the series is called Lost and Hungry. We are Sorted Food, a group of mates from London looking for exceptional things in the food world. In this series of vlog videos, we tour across the USA living by two simple rules. We can't go anywhere or eat anything unless it's been recommended. We could end up getting very lost and very hungry. Spoiler alert, they do get lost and they do get hungry. <laughs> I know, I know. So uh, I think we're open to questions. Brian, you want to explain how – Brian Watkins, our uh, chief engineer here to my left, will explain. He's giving me the look. He just gave me the Watkins hate look. Hey, don't hate on me. You want to explain how people chat us? Sure. Thanks, Mark. So in the bottom, in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a little blue icon with, uh, with this little call-out box where you can ask, uh, type in a question. And if you have dialed in and uh, – you can ask a question via the phone, and an operator will provide instructions on how to do that now. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen over the phone, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad if you would like to ask a question. Again, it's star 1 to ask a question live on the phone. Hopefully we won't have to call our attorney in to answer the questions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is Washington, D.C. You know, things get kind of tricky around here. Uh, do we have questions that are coming in online? Not yet. Okay. And no fun questions at this yeah, time. I was say, do you have any more dad well, jokes? It would have been better, probably, if I think of some really bad ones. You got one? Operator? No, everyone. No phone questions at this time. We'll give it a few more, a few more moments. Uh, and by the way, you can either call or write either Giselle or myself if you have questions about how the network works or you have content questions, yeah. you know, we're happy to talk to you. Um, 
we get a million emails just like everyone else in the world. Sometimes a quick phone conversation is the best way to go. So feel free to give us a buzz. You have questions? You want to read them? Sure. Uh, the first question is, could you go over the part about being part of the test group? Oh, it's really just, <laughs> it's kind of an inside, inside joke, really. It's official than it Yeah, is, it's not yeah. that official, really. The, the app is already live. We're just not publicizing or promoting it yet. And in today's world where there are probably a million apps out there, it's unlikely anyone's going to just discover it. Mm -hmm. So we're just telling you during this uh, webinar uh, that if you'd like to help us out, we'd really appreciate it. Download the app. Uh, test drive it and then send us an email about things that you like or things that aren't working because we're still trying to break it, you know, because obviously the first thing you try to do with new products is see whether or not everything is functional in the UX. So just go to the App Store, go to either Apple or go to Google Play and download the app, please. Yeah, and, and, and when, you, when you search it, it should be Go USA, No Space, and then Space TV, and that should bring it right up. Okay, your next question is, do you have a paid media campaign to promote your OTT channel? You ask the right people. <laughs> the answer is yes. Yes, we do. Uh, um, you know, the, the landscape for OTT is a little, um, a little bit the wild, wild west. Uh, so far, we've found um, that Roku has been the most responsive in terms of having placements and opportunities to be able to feature our channel. Um, one of the things that we have done um, in the past, to promote the channel that I, um, I think has been the most successful so far in terms of being able to, to see um, um, people actually downloading it in a, at a cost-efficient way is um, Roku ICS initial channel selection. And it's an opportunity to um, feature your channel um, when people um, first buy a Roku device. ICS, yeah. that's an acronym I hadn't yeah. heard. One more. Initial channel selection. Nice. So yes, we do. So we do a combination of um, banners and, and uh, pre-roll video for awareness. Um, and then we do ICS as a little bit more of a DR effort to drive downloads of the channel um, internationally. The cool part about advertising on OTT, if you're going to go in that direction yourself, is you can advertise right on the channel where you exist. Mm -hmm. right? So it's not that much of a leap to actually get somebody to do something rather than trying to advertise off-platform, drive them to the platform and download it and then use it, right? Yeah, and, and, and with the, the launch of the, the smartphone applications, it really extends our reach so much more because there's only so many people that have these um, uh, connected TV devices, even though that is rapidly growing with every year. Um, everyone has a smartphone in their pocket. So um, in terms of promoting the uh, smartphone apps, the opportunity in terms of going off-platform becomes so much bigger, particularly when you can link directly to the, the stores for downloads. You know, I used to work with a guy that actually carried around five phones. We used to call him Johnny Five Phones. And no joke, I mean, because he was, he was the app developer in the group oh, that so I worked with. Yeah, so he always had five phones on him. So next question, is there any thoughts to adding Spanish subtitles? Uh, you know, one of the things we're exploring actually is a, is a full multi-language environment. Uh, we're still trying to figure out how expensive that, that is, but ideally that would be the move to actually have subtitles mm -hmm. that you can select kind of like the way you do on Netflix. Mm -hmm. We're still checking out that functionality to make sure that we can afford it and can do it, but we would love to do it as everybody on this call hopefully realizes we have uh, websites and social media in many languages and we hope to mimic that uh, on OTT as well. Yeah, we're also looking at opportunities um, for any uh, Go USA TV originals to film both in English and Spanish. Um, so those are definitely in the consideration set, set as we are looking to produce content. Okay, any predictions uh, for the launch on Android? Well, the prediction is that it will work. <laughs> uh, it's. Uh, <laughs> it's it's actually there already. It's in the Google Play Store. It just went live. Um, so again, don't judge us because uh, it still needs some work. Uh, I saw it like late yesterday and it was starting to play videos. I checked it again this morning and it was playing videos um, and everything seemed to be loading fine. But it's going to depend on um, what, the, what kind of Android, Android device you have. As you know, if you've done any kind of development, uh, Android is really tricky because there, there's so many different phones. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when you do regression testing, what you start to notice is it works on, you know, the Galaxy 8, but it won't work on LG. The, L, the LG 4 or, you know, and then everybody flips out because it's not working on their personal phone. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more work actually to get Android working properly, but I have no doubt that we will get there. Anything else? Yes, we have one last question here. 
Um, and Becky says, we've already sent content to Go USA TV. When will we know if our content was selected to be on the channel? That guy's just asleep at the switch, I'll tell you. I don't know what he does for a living. It's probably sitting in my inbox, and for that I apologize. Um, we have a, a bunch of submissions, and I was actually out in the field, and now I'm making excuses, uh, the last week or so shooting some things. Uh, but uh, rest assured you will get a response back from us. Whenever, everyone that submits will get a response, one or the other. We're happy to talk to you or email back and forth. But uh, thank you so much for submitting, and we encourage everybody to do so. That's it. There are no more online Do you have any concluding remarks, Giselle? Please download the app in the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. And we so appreciate everybody listening today. Thank you.